Welcome to DevOps Accents, a podcast on everything around DevOps, public cloud, and cloud native topics with your hosts, Pablo, Leo, and Kirill. Hello, and welcome to another episode of DevOps Accent, a podcast where we, the co founders of MKDev, get together to discuss all things around DevOps, cloud native technologies, and AI. I guess. Uh, today we are like uh, in our. <laughs> this is new, eh? <laughs> yeah, this is the, 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 this was new. Here we go. It's official. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> because you never say that. It's, it's the first time. Yeah. L- 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 I decided to stop pretend <laughs> we're all about DevOps. Okay, it's it's it, I, I, it's official, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Today, today we are in our um, like a star crew. Pablo, Kirill, and I, we are together again. Yay! Welcome. Hello, guys. How are you? Hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm freezing. It's winter, and it's time to discuss what this year was, how it, how it was, uh, what we learned, what we didn't learn, what we wanted to learn. Uh, so uh, I will make like a special announcement. So, so one question. So this is going to be an episode you talking about what happened in 2023. So we are going to make a summary of the whole year. Yes, a summary, a summary episode, a season finale, grand finale. Very good idea. Uh, yeah, and, and before we proceed, I would like to make a smaller announcement for our listeners because, like, as you listen to this, we are basically wrapped up everything uh, on our side for this year, and we went on our vacations. And next time you will hear and see us will be like the next year. So if you don't want to miss the new video that will be released on January 2024, hit the subscribe button and I don't know, like do the YouTube magic or whatever, like just not to miss. But before, like, um, before we go on, uh, this would be the episode where we discuss what happened like the in 2000. 23, we decided to make a top of events what happened. And I know that probably you have your own top. And I would like you to share in the comments, like what you, was your top uh, events of this year, top news or top whatever, what happened to you or what you think was the most significant part? Because I personally was torn apart between a lot of things. And I think like this, even for MK Dev, this was a huge year. And I think, guys, we should start a little bit on, on that. Uh, what do you think? Like, what's your impression on this year in regards to MK Dev? I personally think like this was an awesome year. We've learned so so much. We met so many awesome people, and like e- even this AI department that we <laughs> started recently. Like, what's your what's your impression on that? Pablo, say something. Come on, come on. Sorry, wake up. <laughs> it's because I don't know if I have cop. If no, but it. it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, was I mute or something? No, I am not mute. Sorry, it's because I don't know if it's the the COVID or whatever thing. But could you repeat the question? Sorry, it's because I did not get the question, <laughs> and it was a question to me. Oh, it was a general question. No, it it, it, it was it, it was not a question. I was sharing my impression about MK Dev. Like that's like a big year for us. It was because we we attended uh, a lot of conferences. So we met a lot of people. We learned many new things, and we started AI department. And I think this was a huge year for MK Dev. And I was asking, what's your impression? Do you do you feel the same way <laughs> on that? So I think that yes. And sorry again because today maybe. My brain is only 5% working. You know, I, I think that, yes, that it was a super cool year, you know. It, it, and not only because, you know, all the the new customers, all the new the events where we have been during the whole year because we have been in in, in many cities. We have been sponsoring many, many, many events during this year. We are, for example, with this podcast that, okay, it's not the first year of the podcast, but okay, we are currently, if I remember correctly, this is number 27, so the record number 27. So it's something fantastic, you know. Uh, We have been doing many, many, many themes during this year that, okay, that we can talk about that. So for me, yes, it was a a fantastic year. And 
you know, it's something that I hope that in 2024 we, we can do something even better. Kirill, what about you? Yeah, like for the company was amazing. Uh, I think we have, we got a really good problem of scale that we got so many new things happening that for me it was challenging to like work-life balance uh, or work-work balance. Uh, but it's a good problem to have when you have so many things happening that you have so many uh, customers and projects ongoing. Uh, but definitely one of the things I'm looking forward to in the next year is to how we can make it smoother for everyone to delegate a bit more and organize ourselves with this ever-increasing load a bit better. But a fantastic year in any case. Yeah. And it's uh, on a personal side, it's uh, also, but uh, I like if I start talking about personal things uh, that happens, it's will the podcast will become like three hours long. Uh, let's stick to the the idea. Uh, like uh, I have prepared my own top things of major events that happened this year, but I would like uh, Pablo. I would like you to start with that because I know that this point, this topic, is uh, both very exciting for us and like the, uh, basically this is what defined us in the second half of the year and and will we will continue defining us in the next year so pablo you start with your top two things that happened today uh, to this year i mean i think that in 2023 many things happen but okay it's something that is clear for everyone that okay it's not something that i have to say or anyone can have to say that you know the top one of things that happen in, in 2023 is the AI and the AI in, in everything, you know, not, not only because, you know, GPT is one year old, so it started in 2022, you know, like the open version because GPT, like a company, OpenAI, is 2015 when it was created, 2016, 17, I don't remember correctly. So, you know, uh, we are not telling that the AI wasn't there before because all of us, we are using Google, and when you type something in Google, there is some artificial intelligence that is able to post to you the results in a correct way. Uh, Amazon is able to show to you what you want to have because there is an artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence is everywhere. But mm -hmm. we have to say that 2023 was the year that shows to, to all of us, you know, uh, what it was an LLM and what is an LP and how a, a large model is able to, let's say in this way, to have a conversation with with humans in the way that uh, humans had conversation with humans. So you talk with a machine, you talk with a natural language model, and this model is answering to you in the way that you're expecting to a human answering to you. But we need to think about that too. You know, at the end is what Kirill says many times, it's only a, an algorithm that is making a statistic and giving to you the the most next token, okay, the statistically best next token that you can you can hear. So it's not a human talking to a human. It's an statistical answer talking to you. But uh, but in whatever case, this is the really the the year that everything changed in AI. Because now everything is AI. You know, but when you say everything, it's everything. Because wow. See the companies offering services. All the companies now offer AI. You know, when when you see uh, whatever thing, everything these days is with AI. So there is nothing that is not with AI these days. And I think like this year was uh, especially like prominent for AI. Like uh, as you said, AI was invented. Like okay, not uh, I mean. Uh, large language models that were invented many years ago, but this year was the, basically the first year when it was available to the wide audience, to anyone from from even basically from your phone. Like it, 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 it is similar, like the computers, yeah, they were invented back I don't know, like uh, 1760s or something like that, but they were uh, as huge as the, the room. But when they became smaller that they could fit on your table, they emerged 
and they became publicly available and everybody started using them. And basically the same thing happened to AI, to LLMs. Uh, everybody can use them now without restrictions for free, mostly from your phone, from your desktop, from your laptop, even I, I believe soon from your TV or something like that. Um, it, it, this happened this year. Um, th- th- that's why I think uh, it was it was very important this year. But the, the, the craziness is not only this year, because, okay, the, it's an old, but okay, old thing, but the craziness of this year is, for example, there is a case, a famous case with Mistral, that is a French company, you know? Mm-hmm. Mistral is a French company that appeared in, in June. And the idea is that they, those three guys who created Mistral, they sit together and in 14 days, they go with a PowerPoint with nothing, only a PowerPoint. So imagine that we three sit together. We have an idea and we go with a PowerPoint to a certain number of venture capitals. This happened in June and they get 105 millions in, in a 400 million valuation in, in 14 days. So with nothing, only a PowerPoint. Crazy. But this is not the, the only point. The point is that now, in in November, in December, November, I don't remember, they get a two billions valuation and they get 450 million. Mm-hmm. But okay, the thing is next. We need to understand why is this crisis valuation and why they get 450 million. The problem is that when Mistral, Mistral, that what is doing Mistral really is creating a, a LLM size of uh, GPT-3.5 because this is what they are doing. So they are working with a... So they are creating a, a new large model. So they are not doing anything else. But okay, there is something that is super cool for them. Okay, really two themes, cool. One is that they are mostly opening all the code. Not all, but most of their code is is open. What well, is a problem? Because when you give a 2 billion valuation and you offer 450 million and then everything is open. But okay, this is something to discuss later. But the second point is that the speed. So Mistral is able to, to offer the tokens in a much, much uh, faster way than any other uh, model at these days. But okay, the idea is why they are getting 450 million valuation. The, the reason is simple, because to train this model, you need 450 million. There is no other way. So then, if you don't pay to me 500 million in total, and I, my, because okay, those three guys who started with 33, I had to imagine, 33, 33, 33 for this PowerPoint. So... Now the, the, you know, the equity that they already have is more or less, I was doing the calculation the other day, more or less is the loss 50%. So now they will have more or less 16, 16, 16. But okay, they have a company that is valued today in 2 billion and with zero customers. So, but why is it so big? Again, it's because they need this big amount of money to be able to, to make this company work. So it, it, it's crazy because instead to pay to them, Two billions because they think that they are going to make two billions or ten billions or billions of billions of revenue. The problem is that they need to give a valuation so high because you need this big amount of money, already five hundred millions, to be able to make this large model. Mm-hmm. And today still you don't know if this is going to be valid or not, because Lama, Lama 2, that is an open model, is there and is more or less doing the same. And it's not too to be them, valuation. But okay. At the end, it's a, it's a freight model. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Some of this, uh, of uh, that's uh, like those stories uh, remind me uh, similar craziness that happened with uh, NFTs some times ago. <laughs> and everything was NFTs, everything was blockchain, like now everything is AI and uh, investors are ready to throw their money in uh, in AI, like just like, just like that. Uh, but NFT is basically dead uh, for now. And uh, I, I've i read uh, an interesting point that NFTs basically were invented during the pandemic to for m- money laundering because... The art market basically was dead for 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 that period. No, nobody was going to galleries. No was no one was buying 
um, art, pictures, uh, um, paintings, or something like that, like the, the main source of money laundering. And they decided, uh, and they invented a digital version of this, and that's uh, NFT cert for that just well. And once the pandemic ended, NFT is dead, dead because no one needs them. <laughs> but I don't think uh, this similar thing will happen to AI. And uh, what else fascinates me uh, about this AI emerging? Uh, I, I've I've subscribed to a number of publics, a number of accounts, and I read uh, like case case studies, case scenarios, and stories of how people use it. And uh, so many interesting cases of how people use AI not just for business uh, or build some useful tools, stuff like that, but they find uh, cool ways to use it in everyday uh, life. And one particular case uh, amused me the most is... Uh, uh, the guy described how he used ChatGPT as a reading companion. Uh, he has ChatGPT with activated uh, voice recognition. And he described how he is reading a book and like some complex book, not some just science fiction, but mostly nonfiction or some uh, philosophical book or something like that. And and when when they met... Uh, a difficult part to understand. Uh, what they do is they read this part to AI and they basically start discussing it. Uh, AI can explain what, what this is about, give you some additional insights and propose any food for thought. And this helps you understand a book better, almost like you are reading it uh, with, the prof with some professor or with some, I don't know, uh, very clever <laughs> person next to you. And I think like this is a cool way to use AI uh, and it's improved the things that uh, you never think would need like a di additional digitalization. Like you, you, you have the book, you can open it and you read it. And now you have this reading companion basically that additionally explain it to you and give it, uh, and make the reading process even more uh, insightful, so to say. And this thing fascinates me the most about this. For me, crazy the amount of use cases uh, and how many? Because the difference with NFT is that none of us three really used NFTs despite the huge hype. Oh, uh, yeah. And there was no real use cases for day to day feel. For me, uh, crazy thing about this. I used it for memes. Yeah, very good use case. There were no <laughs> memes without it before. <laughs> but I think that for me, it's this rare case, like it does happen that often, there's just some new tool that instantly becomes something that I use daily. So really, I use ChatGPT daily. I use GitHub Copilot almost every day to write code. Uh, my wife uses uh, ChatGPT and AI tools for doing her job. It just became part of day-to-day -day work uh, and life so quickly that for me it's crazy. And there are like it's, I'm it's, using it for cooking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, also for like for cooking for recipes. If you just ask it how, how to make something, and that's basically because we or humanity or open AI and other companies they figure out the secret of human language, right? Because the the like the biggest power of ChatGPT or GPT-4 is that they built a model that kind of fully understands uh, human language. So it's able to do anything that is, and that's something that we saw that is unique to humans, uh, but apparently it's actually one of the things that defines humans can become an AI model and do so many things, like translations, because if you see the benchmarks, how much better GPT-4 at, transla at translating things than Google Translate is crazy. No, and, and, and not only that, you know, you have millions of examples. It's true that NFT is not a, is not a good showcase, you know, because, for example, I don't know others, but in my case, I use day by day less and less Google or, or whatever others mm, search in China, you know, because, for example, with this thing with the, with the cooking, the other day I wanted to do cinnamon, cinnamon rolls and I was watching a video and the, the person who made the video, she has a, a blog post about the recipe. I paste the recipe 
and I paste the, the content of the, the recipe plus another recipe, and I ask simple something like, okay, I want to make a soft uh, cinnamon rolls. And really, he's taking the recipe and converting the recipe to, to make a more soft uh, cinnamon rolls using a Chinese technique to make this, this uh, Chinese bread that is super soft. And it's crazy. Because at the end, you are only asking, so I have this recipe, I have this other, but I want to have a soft. And you know, this, this kind of thing is something that you cannot get in, in Google, for example. Or you can, but it will require you like hours of Googling uh, for, for these specific things because there is some, someone who had the same problem as you and probably they, they post a blog post about it, but you will ha have uh, difficult times finding it <laughs> yes, but the, the later on is you want to be the, the the fucking lazy guy in the world, like me many times. And you said, okay, but I want to make only five cinnamon rolls. I don't want to make 25 because this recipe is with, uh, it was a 3.2 kilograms of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's only a, a rule of three, you know, it's something super simple to do. You know, it's not a, you know, it's not going to discover the, the, the black door or something like that. You know, it's only that. And it's able to do that, you know, at, at this level of, of a stupidity, like the humans, we are so stupid. And day by day, we are more and more stupid because with Google, we were stupid. But now with the AI, we're going to be even more, more stupid because we are not taking consideration in what the AI is uh, offering to us. We are taking what it is and that's all. It is, it's fantastic. But the, the problem is, is that, you know, it's something that we talk many times. When you are talking with, um, with Google, Google offers you the result of webs. And then you go to the web and you know who made this web and you know everything. When you talk with a large language model, you have no idea where the content for the answer is coming from. Mm -hmm. Because could be come from 2,000 millions of webs or for 20 or for 200. You have no idea. So then you have no idea if this is true or is not true. Because if you talk about history or something that is like that, uh, in this particular fact, but more or less are in one way, when even there are two or three ways always, because when you go to the history, always the winners are the ones who write the history, not the losers. But okay, always when you make these kind of questions, uh, you are not checking anymore in blogs about history. Now you check in ChatGPT and ChatGPT tend to use the history. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem because before, I remember that I was checking blog histories to check that because when I watch a, a movie about history, I love always to to read while I watch in the movie, you know, to understand much better what is happening. And and the problem is that these days what you do with ChatGPT, you it says, man, but I have to 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 believe that what this uh, model is telling to me is true or not. Exactly. You know, because when I read a, a blog from a historical guy that I know that he okay, he has been in the university, you know, and, uh, how many years he wrote maybe twenty books about uh, this topic, you know that he should be an expert. But in this case, this this model, maybe it's not an expert on that. And even when you say, no, you're wrong, you said, okay, yes, you're right, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I know that you're wrong. The cloud tech industry is evolving so fast. Do you keep up with it by improving your skills or upskilling your team? At MKDev, we offer a variety of workshops for just that, from the basics to expert knowledge. Before delivering our workshops and training sessions, we carry out a detailed assessment of each participant. To make sure the workshop is helpful for you and your team, we will add more content to it or throw out what you already know. Or we create a custom workshop specifically for the needs of your team and the specifics of your project. Another interesting thing that uh, happened this year uh, in relate to AI is like uh, when it appeared last year, we all like, oh no, AI will replace us. Uh, the the writers will lose their jobs. Uh, like, I don't know, journalists will extinct or something like that. And this didn't happen. And uh, in most cases, especially when it comes to writing and when it comes to uh, difficult topics, complex topics, uh, AI proved to be basically useless because he ha it has a lot of limitations. It cannot talk about, like, in most cases, like when you ask to write something to it, it will start uh, giving you 
different kind of disclaimers like yeah i'm not allowed to talk about it or you better consult someone else or something like that and, <laughs> and it's proved useless in most cases in, in, in some cases especially for writers and i i've been reading a a, a post from uh, a shadow writer like sh shadow writers that the, the people who uh, write something on behalf for a uh, more um uh, known uh, writer name and no one knows they're writing something. But you know, they're, they're, sorry, they're sorry to interrupt you here. Do you know how is shadow writer in Spanish? No. It's something crazy. A black. <laughs> black writer. So, yes. Yeah, no, no, it's called no? Negro. It's no. Negro. It, it, oh, it, my God. It, it, I, I <laughs> okay, don't get that. You know, even that, okay. even that. It, 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 if you try, uh, th 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 that's precisely the topic. If you try to d discuss this with ChatGPT, it probably will <laughs> say, like, this is a sensitive topic. Like, uh, I'm not allowed to say, <laughs> to say something like that. And, 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 and I've been uh, re reading the post from the Shadow Writer and, and, and said, like, uh, it didn't happen. We still have the same amount of work. Uh, when we try to use uh, LLM models for that, it's useless. It can help us. So it, it 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 doesn't produce significant work, amount of work, and, and when it comes to creativity, people are, are still retain their jobs. Humans are still better. I see, I think okay. If that's something that the person whose job is in danger is telling you, for sure, that's what you say. If you're the writer, you will say that you're safe. But if you still look at the numbers, uh, there was an article a couple of months ago. Is that on the freelance market, the rates of all copywriters and people who work with text, they basically, they're like two times less now. And the amount of jobs is way, way less. So the whole market of freelance writers and copywriters more or less like is dead now. Yeah. You, you just see by numbers that they're not getting the same money. They get way less projects because, come on, if I need an article about why apples are healthy, mm -hmm. I just ask ChatGPT more or less and adjust it a bit. So yes, as a writer, I would also say that, oh no, that is, I'm so creative, this will never replace me. Yeah, but when it comes to a more sensitive topics, yeah, for example, this this particular writer, he he, he said that he helping writing um, books on um, like detectives, gory stuff, erotic stuff, and other things like that, and that David is not helping with gory or erotic things. <laughs> it will not help you that. It's not helping with gory things yet. <laughs> and, and, and and there are a lot of funny examples when people are trying to jailbreak uh, GPT, uh, making it. Uh, I'm not GPT. Uh, Dali, making it produce some. Um, Gr gruesome image <laughs> and, and and they're funny like uh give me a picture of a rubber duck for example and then they ask her, make it scarier and make it even scarier make it <laughs> and then it produce an ugly scary rubber duck with a lot of blood to jeeps gore or something like that and and they do not ask specifically to produce something like that. Like that. They just ask, make it scarier, and <laughs> to be created for you. The, the, the thing is with the with this gory stuff, right? Yes, openly I refuse this. But imagine um, App Store on your iPhone. Um, there is a strict policy from Apple that you cannot have, I think, like porn apps are out of the question. Many apps is like if you make an app that you know, lets you hunt down people or whatever. It won't be allowed into the app store, but porn websites still exist. So you know there is there will be open source models which are trained to generate this gory content. Absolutely, it's it, it did not happen because the focus right now is still on open AI. But you see, like Google releases their own model, um, the Amazon as well, and Apple. You can see already that they will introduce something next year. So there will be many, many models, uh, also open source ones that you can then use for whatever other topic. So if you want to write erotic stories with some LLM, it will be possible, or it's already possible. You can just Google it, what's possible. You need to use a different tool yes. rather than OpenAI. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, so you, instead to, it, to go to this GPT-4 model, you can go to another model. There are yes. plenty of models. It's the same with image generation. If you ask now Midjourney to generate something sexual, for example, it's really refused, but if you just Google 
AI generate porn, you will find lots of lots of examples. I know, yes, and there are very good examples. Good because they are good in many some ways. But okay, yes. the, the 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 interesting thing with that is that, for example, with all this thing about AI, uh, talking about what happened in two thousand twenty three and about the, we forget to talk, uh, for example, about the metaverse. Nobody talk about the metaverse. Yeah, it's and, that. And yes, no, it, it's okay. Meta is still called Meta. <laughs> so something should happen there, and Meta is still spending millions and millions on that. So, but is that, for example, we are not talking about the the glasses that Apple made, because all of us will remember that Apple made a fantastic glasses that nobody wants to talk about that. So because they are not shouted. Sorry. No, no, the Vision Pro. But that's, I think next year going to be big for, okay, Metaverse is just a stupid name that Schmidt invented, but it will be a big year for AR and VR again, because I think like in February, Vision Pro comes out in US, plus Meta just released the Quest 3, well, not just a couple of months ago. So now I think next year will be again all over the news, simply because Vision Pro will be out, so it will become a big topic again. Apple announced this, but they also said, gonna be ready in six months. But do you know that it's a problem, no? Because first, you need to have something like a glasses. And you need to go with these glasses the whole day. Yeah, put something so, on your head. So it's like if... To connect somewhere yes, to do something. Yes, you're the, the, the whole day with a laptop, the whole day with a cell phone, the whole day with a watch. And now I'm going to have a, a laptop on my eyes. So it's like you are walking on the street and you have a... A laptop on, on your face. <laughs> we are very far away from glasses because the okay Quest and Vision Pro are devices that you use at home for entertainment primarily. Apple will try to do it like a professional device, like Quest Pro as well. But we are very far away. From, and the thing is that it's not AI, right? Because AI is GPU and software. So it's it's not simple to do AI and LLMs so to build more and more models. But in the end, you have lots of computing powers, more and more GPUs, and you write more software. To build something like AR glasses of Vision Pro level, you actually need like 20 years of innovation and development hardware, like the sub four nanometers processors. It's something that you really need for a device that is super powerful and that fits on your head. Mm. I think no one is talking about it because right now there is nothing to show because it just takes billions and years to get to some really good result. Yes, but to, to be able to put this product in the market, you need a heap. You need a moment. And to have this moment, you need to create a moment. And you cannot put a product in the market today and say, okay, uh, this is the product. So before to put this product in the market, you need to sell to the, to the market. Okay, you're going to need this product and you're going to use this product because in case that Apple did not sell 300 million of those in one year, so what is crazy, but it's something like that, it's going to be a failure. So they cannot sell 300,000. I'm giving fake numbers. I have no idea about the numbers, okay? But it's like telling that if Siemens does not sell 300 million uh, radiotherapy machines, it's going to be a failure. Just a different device with a different price tag. If you, have a, if you look at the MacBooks, they're not selling as iPhones. Apple still makes them and still lots of people use, and use them and love them, but they're a smaller percentage of... It's just a different kind of product right now. For sure, it's not the same mass product as a fitness watch or a, a smartphone. And you can also see from the prices, like three and a half K, they definitely targeting someone else there and not everyone. And it will take years till it becomes uh, some future device that will be widely used by everyone. But in whatever case, the AI news eat all those news. And even the AI news, for example, they ate about the, 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 the blockchain. That is something that for me is crazy that day by day, there are more and more companies using blockchain. And and the thing about the the crypto that this is still in in the planet Earth something that for me is a strain. And Fagota is all the news that for example Twitter is not called Twitter anymore it's called X. That for me was the the second big news in about the tech technology in in 2023 because Twitter when uh, because and, and about news is always Elon Musk is there because as all of us we know. Elon Musk is one of the co-founders. Okay, no co-founders, but okay, Elon Musk is one of the founder because he put money and then he left the company of OpenAI. And Elon Musk is the, is the owner of, of Twitter. So he changed the name of Twitter and now it's X. But it's a problem because when you go to X, let me go. I think it's like that, no? If you go to X.com, jump to you, yes, to Twitter.com. 
So then I, I don't get that, you know, because it's not that do it the chain. So when you go to X.com, jump is making to you the jump to 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 Twitter.com. But okay, something crazy. And the good thing is that he was able to prove how reducing all those line of codes, reducing all this position, reducing all these stupid things that the company had, he was able to have the same or even better, even better and much faster than what he had before, reducing 60-70% of the cost. And this is what he was telling at the beginning. Because this is the... Because I, I think always like Elon Musk is this kind of guy who is in a pub. I can't do that 20 times. No, no, no. Yes, give me a beer. I will do that. For me, it's this kind of guy. The problem that he's fucking billionaire. And then he made that. And, and he said, I can fix Twitter and reduce the, the, the expenses 70% and increase the performance twice. Nah, you cannot do that. Yes, no. Uh, okay, I will buy that. 68,000 million. Okay, that's it. For me, it's like that. But okay, the, the crazy thing is that he was able to do that. Okay, he was able to reduce costs and he was able to, to increase performance. Now, he has problem with the advertisement because, for example, the, the people from Disney, they don't want to make any kind of advertisement there. I don't know why. Maybe any of you to know that. Because of uh, anti-Semit shit that Elon Musk was telling publicly. But he is Jews. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but didn't stop him, right? <laughs> it's still Elon Musk. It's a huge cancel campaign in response to a giant trolling from his side. Like, th th that's how I feel it. Uh, a lot of companies, they try to cancel X or Twitter because they think that the audience is unhappy about the owner of the company, they're unhappy about what's going on there and something like that. And if they advertise there, that will uh, put a stain on their image. And that's basically what happens. And, and from my point of view, Elon doesn't help it because he puts, he, he, he's trying to fix uh, the fire with, uh, by adding even more gas into it. <laughs> it, it it's funny it's it, it's funny to uh, to watch w what happens from the outside but i i really wonder what happens on the inside because i remember when uh, at the end of last year when elon actually purchased twitter everybody predicted like the company will die very soon and then a lot of uh, different positive improvements happened. Uh, and now Twitter is, from my point of view, it's better to use as algorithms really improved because before, if you go to a homepage, there was like a lot of nonsense that uninteresting to me. But now I, I don't know how the algorithm works. I know it's open source and you can go ac and actually check how it works. But from my point of view, I can say that this year was actually the first year ever when I checking on the uh, the main page of Twitter daily, almost daily, because there is always something interesting for me. Uh, this uh, uh, this algorithm really uh, produces a good content to me, a relevant content, relevant to what what I uh, I think is interesting. Because, for example, I I've been following a lot of AI topics, and it uh, gave me a lot of AI themes. And, and the, the, then when I switch to something interesting, for example, like in gaming industry, like happens, like for example, and it's immediately responds with a relevant. Um, tweets or how to post uh, with that and, and, and I find it like it's very useful and it's very engaging things now and it's never happened to me before because I always hated Twitter for that but they, for me Elon fixed it and I don't know how and I don't know how they reduced costs and I don't know how they if they're operating or not I know that he has a grand design for this platform by converting it to X up something uh, similar to uh, Chinese Weibo, how they call it, 
like the 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 applic- WeChat. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, s- 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 he, he, I, I know he's trying to build something similar, like the all-in-one application that you can use to call for calls, for pays, a payment, or uh, for something like that. And I think he's built uh, a foundation for that, even even though. Uh, he has some troubles with advertisers for now. The foundation is already there, and that's I, I think that's the most important things for him because he he is able to throw money into the problem, and it's kind of remind me how he was building SpaceX uh, at first because it was not successful for a longer period until it became successful. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but I remember Twitter itself was very like unprofitable for many, many years. But for some reason, nobody remembers it for now. And when they discuss that advertising are leaving Twitter, they don't remember the many, many years of Twitter that not making money at all. First point, I am not uh, to, I was checking an and Elon Musk is not Jews, so you know. So then, and I was reading the news about the anti-Semitic themes, and now I understand the the point of of Disney. <laughs> yes, no, because he even he said something so bad that then he had to travel to Israel. Yes, it was like on this apology trip, more or less, because there was like, like now you're gonna be like Kanye West because that's the level of Kanye West now. This kind of statements. Yes, I, I was reading that. Yes. <laughs> And to me, this was even, okay, uh, I know this is entirely unrelated to the problem, right? But if I uh, was Israeli, I would be offended by this move of Elon Musk because he said something stupid. Everybody decided that they will leave his platform. And he decides to go to Israel to uh, apologize not because he really cares about me or what happened in my country, but because he, the advertiser decided to leave his platform. Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> okay, I, I, I would be even more offended by, the, by, by this move. I, I think it's like with Elon Musk, it's important to learn not to be, not to expect anything, not to be surprised, because if you just, if you look at last 10 years of all these things that he said, or he promised what he delivered is just it's hit or miss you, n- you never know because he, he somehow he promises crazy things and then he somehow delivers like half of them like with the cyber truck and then he still manages to be successful and loved by some and then hated by some like take cyber truck the thing that was like will he said it will cost like 30 or 40k 60 it's gonna have a yes. range of like six or 700 kilometers mm-hmm and then it was like delayed so many times. I, even I remember because in the original design there were no no side mirrors, and it was like, oh, you cannot do the car without side mirrors. So like, yes, we can. And then they look at the cyber truck, mm-hmm. <laughs> basically. And, and and still, somehow, cyber truck is the big news all over the place. If if you check the competitors of this car, like Rivian, cyber truck just like it's not horrible, but it's so much worse. But everyone talks about Cybertruck. It's for me the craziest marketing human on planet Earth right now because everyone somehow cares what he's telling and doing because, yes, he the Twitter became better in one year for sure. And the algorithm is good. Algorithm was good before that. I remember I was spending time, like for me, Twitter is always one of the primary social networks because of the algorithm. And there are some things that got better, some things that got worse, like this blue check mark. Because now, before you knew, oh, there's like, Blue check mark for Taylor Swift, so that's Taylor Swift. And now you see, oh, there's a blue check mark for John Doe. He must be a famous and good guy. And you open his profile, and it's like 200 followers. Like, fuck, this guy just like paid eight bucks, and now he has a blue mark. And before my mind was relying that if someone has a blue mark, it's important person or I don't know, like famous enough. And now everyone has a blue mark. And yes, Twitter is still around, but in the end, it's it's the same Twitter, right? It's it's so much, the amount of news around X and Twitter is almost like around ChatGPT. And in the end, it's, it's, it's the social network that is out there since more than 10 years without significant changes. And now with AI, now it has grown. <laughs> yeah. 
but the difference with this cyber track, you know, the, the, the first thing is the, the line. They, they broke off the lines. So, you know, there is no cards like that. It's like, a, you know, when you're playing in Roblox, you know, my kids play Roblox. It's, it's this kind of card that you can have in Roblox. So, you know, and, and not only the, the, the lines, you know, is the, for example, this advertisement that they made in the presentation of the car, that there is a race between Cybertruck and a Porsche. And the Cybertruck win the Porsche. Mm -hmm. But not only the Cybertruck win the Porsche, is that the Cybertruck is carrying another Porsche in the back part. So it's much faster than the ports, but the cyber track plus carrying another port. So, and these kind of themes, he's able to do that. I hate this. This, this is a good example of really good marketing because exactly. this, this starts from zero to hundred makes zero sense in real life yes. because yes, the any electric car, but any, like if you, if you rent, Reno Zoe, like this. Yes, because crappiest, cheapest electric car you can. You, you can see when they, when they drive. Exactly, mini. you don't need to change the, the the position of the engine as yes. soon as you change it's, the the gear. It's how they work. Exactly, this is an Escalade street car. You press the pedal. I, I laugh because I, anytime I rent an electric car in in Munich and I stand on the traffic light and there's like taxi with like Mercedes Benz E class and I'm inside Reno Zoe or ID3 Volkswagen and there's the green light and it just starts so much faster on the straight line. But come on, if you go on like 300 kilometers a strip, this Mercedes-Benz will kill me with the speed, with how the engine works. For sure, electric car is fast at this short start. If you will try to do... There was a video from uh, MKBHD about Formula One. And he was telling that... He was telling about these cars and how fast they are. And he was telling that, yes, for sure, even my Tesla Model Y is faster at the start than a Formula One car. But if you simulate how fast the Formula One car will go around the track, Tesla will just, it will die on the first corner because it just, the car is not built for racing. So it's this typical marketing thing is, oh, look how fast Model Y can accelerate on the straight line on the racetrack. But people will put like th three kids and the wife and go to Ikea to buy stuff with this car, not the, race. Kirill, imagine that you are in this island where I live in and you have a cyber track. You're going to be known by everyone. So there are people who is going to buy the car because... Like a lo local crazy person. Yes, but if you live where I live in, <laughs> that is a little island, there are people who will buy this car only because of that, because, come on, you have a fucking cyber truck and you are the only one in the island with a cyber truck. I, I, I want to have a cyber truck too. You know, not me, because I even don't have the drive license. But, you know, I can understand that the people, they want to have this this cyber track a uh, uh, car because it's something you know cool because for me what is cool the first time that i saw this car it was the line i did not imagine for me it was something like okay it's it's only a a pre model uh, and then they're going to curve the lines no no man it's like that it's like like triangles it's completely different to what imagine in another car for me this is the the crazy thing with this car I don't know. I I think it looks ugly and oh, beautiful. Uh, beautiful at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's ugly and beautiful at the same time. Uh, but uh, if you look at like from the distance, I don't know how it looks from close up. Uh, I never had a chance to witness and it. It's six hundred six hundred horses. So <laughs> there are fucking trucks with less horses than that. You know, it's 608 horses. So it's something like, a, come on, please, where do you want to go with that? So, no, no, it's, it's, it's something, something crazy, you know, about that. And again, it's marketing, yes, but very well sell marketing. And in a way that Elon, he is a person who is there. And every time that he says something, you know, there are one, two, three millions of people that clap to him. Because these people made money with him in the Tesla stocks. Because these people, they need to have something like a fan uh, or like a god. For whatever reason it is, he has one, two, three, four, five, ten millions of people that they love him. But love in the way that they love him. And, and he will be the, the, the god of these people always. Okay, moving on. My top things uh, happened in this year. Uh, Naturally, Pablo stole the most obvious topic about speaking about AI. Uh, but uh, another thing that happened 
Okay, it, 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 it didn't happen this year. It started uh, the year before that. Uh, uh, but I still think that that's the most, one of the most interesting things of this year is generative AI and how good it became this year and how widespread it became and how, how uh, many, many companies started working on that and, and, and again, how available it became. Midjourney was uh, before and now there are so many other uh, generative uh, image generation tools and generative AIs, not just for static images, but also for video. And the main thing that, the most important thing that happened this year is when Adobe Photoshop released the Firefly version of uh, generative AI and uh, included it in the, in the standard package of Adobe Photoshop. And this changed a lot of things. And editing photos or creating new things, uh, it, it, it became like a next level of design, I assume. it. And even us at MKDev, like most not just most, almost every, every every thumbnail for our YouTube videos are generated by DALI. Uh, we used Midjourney before that, now we use DALI for that, and it's 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 very good for that. It's it's makes it, it work, but I, I'm most impressed with how it works, with how, how you can combine uh, it uh, in Photoshop. Like, for example, you can create uh, a number of different images and then combine it using Firefly inside of Photoshop and it will create a compose even more engaging images. And I even use it in on my, uh, on my other projects and for example, you find an, a perfect, a perfect picture, a perfect image of some building, but you have like a construction site on the background, and you can simply remove it with just one click, was one simple move. And this, this is amazing, and I cannot stop uh, be amazed every time I still uh, I use this uh, tool uh, today. It still amazes me. I still don't understand how it works, and sometimes it's it's create uh, funny things, but it's it's it, 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 it's so cool. And uh, again, it's uh, not replaces the the job position. It only makes it more easier for now. And I don't think that we will be in the in this position where it will be able to basically replace. But it 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 made. Photoshop and more complex things available to a wider audience. For example, I had uh, some training sessions for people who don't really understand how to work with Photoshop or how to create a beautiful images. But with Firefly, when you explain to them that you can click here, click there, and find a funny picture, and then you can expand it and create uh, a thumbnail for your own YouTube channel, um, just basically with that, it's helped them to basically step into this position. Uh, and I think this is one of the greatest achievements uh, for, for us in this year. And I can't wait to see what the next year will present because there's this tool uh, for video generation, like when you propose an image and it generates a video based on this image. It's a very big thing and it will I hope it will be released on uh, very soon, and I can't wait to try it on 2024. Uh, what do you guys think about it? Like Kirill, you you create and probably you create a lot of thumbnails. How do you think? Like, does it uh, answer your needs? Yes, for sure. And okay, you can say it's not replacing jobs, but you can probably guess that it reduced number of hours you paid for creating for thumbnails in the end because we just used DALI to generate it. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't replace all the jobs, but it reduces uh, amount of some jobs. And I don't think we're the only ones who use it to generate small things like thumbnails. Uh, I think it's many, many content creators. I'm looking forward to videos. 
Uh, I am trying out some of the new tools for this lately because we make a lot of videos, so I want to do more and more with AI for the videos, not just images. And yeah, for me as a uh, visually visual design capable person, uh, it's great because I can do so many things now with all of this. I tried. Th there are some tools that were announced for the video generation that are not yet widely available. There are some that are actually like you can just use them and they work. So one of them, I think it was in video that I was trying out two weeks ago. I think what they do is basically they you give them a prompt of what you want your video to look like. And I think they just use some like an API to search stock images. And then they use some model to animate those stock images because it looked like you, they take like a stock image for a conference uh, center with people. But then they use something to animate it. Then they just like uh, attach one to another and make a video out of it. Do, do you know that today there is a tool that remember that do you know that do you have any and, and a photo? And then mm, with the photo do you check the skeleton of the person that is in the photo of the object? I say the banana or a person, and then you make the movement, and then you can generate the movement of this video. Or automatically uh, you know you can do that uh, with no intervention for you and I can imagine that in six months one one year this is going to advance so so quickly and so deeply that for sure in this size there are many people who is going to lose their jobs here yes for sure because it's what Kirill says uh, why I'm going to pay a guy if I can tell to to an intelligent hey I need to have a uh, a graph for this uh, video that is going to do that and that and that and insert me this graph in the minute 25 uh, correct that blah blah that's all so imagine no but this for me is 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 one of the one of the points where we are going to to see how the the people is going to be needed less and less and less and less because at the end it's something it's something simple to be to be replaced these days because I cannot imagine five years ago that you're telling to a person, hey, you can write here what photo you want and it's going to generate for you magically. So it was impossible. I don't think it will result in the big unemployment market. No. Because I think every every time humanity saw that we will, because there was also this famous prediction in the 60s that by 2010 or something, people will work only four hours per week and we will not have to work that much. What happened with all this automation and progress, etc., is that we just work more. And there are, I think like in Germany, there are one million unfulfilled job openings. So it's just, yeah, like some people will stop making money on what they make money with right now, but there will be so many new other jobs and things to do that I think it's going to be fine. There will be some retraining, but total number of jobs will just grow. Yeah. And speaking about like unemployment, uh, that's another thing that I think um, defined uh, 2023 is how how many layoffs uh, was during uh, this period. Like it started, it started in the end of 2022, but it's like I was uh, a tsunami of layoffs uh, on January and February. 2023, when Amazon, Microsoft, they and Google, they started to uh, firing a lot of people, like thousands of people. Like, for example, Amazon uh, at, at the beginning of the year they said that they will uh, lay off more than uh, 18,000 employees. Google said they will lay off, they cut. 12,000 workers or something like that, and Microsoft another 10,000 and or something like that. And then l later in, uh, in the spring, Amazon um, laid off another 9,000 or, or, or so people. And it was like a pandemic of layoffs. And I looked up for numbers and it appeared that uh, on a span of one year from a major IT companies, um, the, uh, the major uh, tech companies had laid off more than uh, 160,000 workers just in one year. Uh, but 
I don't think this is something that's somehow connected to AI or something like that. This is more related to probably to pandemic when the companies started to hire more and more people because during the pandemic, the companies uh, they had increased their capital, like everybody was uh, dying, but the tech companies they were thriving. And they hired a lot more people, and now they just don't have a job for them. Uh, I don't remember the name of the CEO and from what company uh, they was like, uh, and they explained to uh, what uh, happened. And uh, he was saying that something like that, uh, everyone just kept hiring, hiring, uh, whether it made... Uh, any sense or not for that uh, because there was no downside to it. You you have uh, a lot of job, uh, you had a lot of work power for that. And everything they were cared about is to, to grow at any cost. But then at some point, everybody sell, said that, no, this is not how it works and we should get back to normal <laughs> and, and that's basically the reason why they decided to fire so many people and it's not connected to AI and and th this is fascinating to me because even though uh, there were so many layoffs I don't think the market really felt this I'm not sure but I have the impression like this is not like a huge uh, amount of available workforce on the market, like who suddenly needs uh, some job. Uh, because when you are looking for a qualified people, it's still difficult to find a qualified people on the market. And like this, I think, was a major lesson for a lot of us uh, on the companies and on the on the IT side uh, of employment, how it works. And I'm interested how it will change in 2024 after, after so many lay layoffs in 2023. And for you, Kirill, what is the, the most interesting news in 2023? I was thinking, and I don't know, the only thing that comes to my mind except AI yeah, is this new Apple chip that we had like the whole episode about that Apple now has three nanometer chips in MacBooks and in iPhones, which for me, I think it's something that looks like not such a big news. But if you look at the path to this first production ready sub four nanometers chips, it's actually super impressive. Um, but it's, no, I think it's something that does not catch the headlines. Uh, people don't talk about it because there is, it is the thing with the, like one thing is, AI that Jerry wants to talk about it, uh, that is cool and also complex and changes so many things. And I think is this kind of slow hardware progress or coming up with new hardware advancements that like, we don't talk about it because it doesn't influence our day-to-day -day lives directly. But in the end, it matters a lot also for AI because what happens next year again with Apple, most likely, is that uh, this... Apple's version of LLM will be inside iPhone, most likely running completely offline on your on your phone without internet connection. And that's what also Google just announced, that one of the smaller versions of Gemini, whichever way you pronounce it, uh, cool that they named AI after the really mediocre movie with Will Smith and his son. And these chips enable this, right? Because if you look at, again, Apple is really good at it. If you look at what they say, like, we do machine learning, we do AI. Like every time they talk about chips, they emphasize how many uh, operations, like trillion operations per second on this neuro engine, this AI stuff. And why? Because they already do a lot of things with AI. There was a news, I'm not sure if you saw it. There was a lady in the US, she was making a photo of her friend. She was making a photo of, of her in the wedding dress in front of two mirrors. And there was some glitch in iPhone's software that the way that the the original the human was standing and both reflections it was three different poses so like imagine like she st she stands with the hands like this in one mirror she uh, like one of her hands is like like this at, at the top and in the other reflection both hands are in the in the air 
and there was apparently a glitch in iPhone's uh, software because in the end, whenever you make a photo on any iPhone right now, even on yours, Pablo, <laughs> and despite the <laughs> hardware deficiency, <laughs> it, it makes insane amount of computational photography, but just like insane, because the only way you can get such a good photo from the phone is not because you have a good lens, because you cannot put a good lens, it's because you have lots of, lots of computation with every single photo, because it makes like whatever, 20 different photos with different exposures, uh, they put them on top of each other and then modify them all the time. And there was a glitch. As such. And for me, it was shocking because I saw the computational photography, for sure it's there in every phone. I was not aware that it it's so advanced that it can actually change the pose of the, of the human. For me, it was like... There are people <laughs> claiming that it's a fake, the photo, to, talking about that too. I think there was some, yeah, could be. Yeah, but I think no, there, no, no idea. It was like, it's only that there there people yeah. claiming that this is not I, I, saw, I saw it as well, like, not possible. I think there was a um, confirmation from Apple or some bug report. No idea. But the point is, is that modern smartphone already does so much with AI in every part of the interface, of every photo interface, like when you type, etc. offline, without making calls to open AI. And what these new chips and more and more powerful chips will allow is that the power of something like GPT-4 or similarly capable models in the future will be just in your phone. Because right now, if you look at the amount of hardware you need for GPT to run somewhere out there on the huge data center, it's crazy. Like, what was the break even? Look at the pricing there. Uh, how much is it usually cost some software as a service product for, like, let's say the Okta or Google Workspace? It's maybe five, ten, like twelve euro maximum or dollars for the biggest one. If you look at the prices for ChatGPT Enterprise of all this AI stuff, or oh, the Googles uh, do it, it's 30 euro plus per month, which is, it, it's a huge price. And I think it's a huge price also because the expenses they have to process all of this AI requests is just insanely high. So I'm excited about better hardware that we got this year and that we will keep getting with this new uh, lithography process that will allow us to run it cheaper and directly on smaller devices. There is, talking about the photo, there is an exercise that all of you can do at home. But okay, the good thing is that if you do with another person because they, the other person needs to show you the truth and then you need to see that. If you're in front of a mirror and you look to only one eye in the mirror and then you look to the other eye and then you look to the other eye, really your eyes are moving. Yes. So your face is static, but your eyes are moving because when you're checking that, but if you see the mirror, the eyes are static. Yes. So your brain is not moving the eyes. So your brain is, is making a, a tiny slap. So what happened? Because the question is in physics is what happened with this time? Where is this time come from? So where does this time goes? No, come from, uh, if you see yourself in the mirror, there is no movement of your eyes and your eyes are always static. But they, really, there is something happening in your, in your brain that is changing and is making that the eyes are always focused in the same spot and static. But the other person, I said the other person is going to see that the eyes in the mirror are moving, but really you don't see that the eyes are moving. So it's similar to what iPhone could be doing with the photos. Probably. There was a thread on, on Twitter or on X. Uh, back then it was still Twitter. I, forgot, I think it was some... Um, neuroscientist, a neurosurgeon, he was explaining how eyes of human work. And he was telling, like, he starts, like, he is always surprised at this extremely shitty, stupid system that humans' eyes are, even functions. And then he, there was, like, lots, lots of explanations how it works. Basically, I think he was saying that between the movement of the eyes, the brain actually doesn't see anything. So if you go, like, from left to, to right, there is a very, lots of discrete movements and between each of them, you see nothing. It's actually your brain just finishes the picture for you that you see something. But there is no continuous con image generation. More or less, yes. <laughs> frame generation. Yeah, frame generation. <laughs> Plus, the when you do like this, when you close one eye with the hand, you feel like you still see 3D uh, because your brain remembers how 3D world looks like. But actually, if you, if, if you lose one eye, you lose 3D capability. Exactly. And, and there is one uh, cognitive effect that I discovered when I was a kid, when I was playing 3D uh, video games. If you close one eye, 
and you play the video game uh, watching with just one eye, you start seeing a 3D image. Precisely because your brain is uh, building this stereoscopic image for you with just one eye. And it's created a very interesting effect because you, 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 you look at the, at, the, at the flat screen, but you see a 3D image. Uh, and your brain just built it, basically building this information based on how your character moves in this 3D world, how the perspective works. And because your brain knows this information, uh, it, it produces a 3D image for you inside your brain. And uh, as soon as you uh, look at the, uh, the similar, at uh, the same image with your two eyes, the illusion disappears like immediately. And I still, from time to time, I still uh, trying to replicate this, and it still works. <laughs> and it even works with movies, with video games. And the, 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 the only thing, the image should be dynamic. It doesn't work with static images. <laughs> and the, 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 the funny effect. And speaking of, uh, of about hardware, I, uh, I recently read a news about... Uh, I don't know where exactly, but uh, they, the scientists, they decided to use human brain cells for LLM models, and these human brain cells they were a part of speech recognition a process, and they were integrated in some chip or something like that, and they were helping to recognize speech uh, even better than uh, um, uh, just a silicon chip. Uh, would do and that just gave me the idea how our iPhones in the future will work they will be they will have a part of human brains inside of them <laughs> for uh, compute power and the, the last thing that I wanted to say like all things that we discussed today in regards of AI of technology is it's still like the, the most impressive Thing that this all this happened in a short, very short period, like just in just one year, so many things happened, so many things evolved, and I think this speed of evolution will will increase in the next years. Before we wrap this up, I would like everyone who listens to us, who watches us on YouTube, uh, just give us your top three, I don't know, top two things of 2023 that happened to you and possibly a prediction for 2024 for the next year. And we will see you and hear you like next year when we released another episode of our podcast and our video and you just guys stay tuned and keep uh, give us your likes, give us uh, your subscriptions and for you guys, Pablo and Kirill, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me. And a happy 2024 for everyone. Yeah. And, and visit our store and buy some merch. Yeah, but, but, and <laughs> like happy new year, uh, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, whatever you see are celebrating <laughs> to everyone. Uh, see you and hear you next year. There are no challenges that we couldn't overcome. Whether it is immediate infrastructure problems or planning a future project, we won't simply answer your questions. We become a part of your team to help you complete the mission. Our solutions consider the interests of your business and the combined expertise of the industry as our staff is made up of more than a dozen experts in different areas who share decades of field-tested experience and knowledge with you.